Hey Fernando. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we can't we can't fake any conversations no, no, here. No. Okay. To give you some background, we bought some new software that is specifically for photo contests. This was the trial run. This was kind of the beta test to see how the new software was going to perform for public voting. So this is what we're about to talk about now. It's right there on yeah. Fernando's screen. That's the public voting. There are definitely some pros and cons here. So we're going to announce the winners. We're going to get to this. But first, we got to talk about what we're seeing. So one of the things that we found in this platform is easy to vote. That's one thing that people said. But on the other hand, the platform shows the picture really in a really tiny color. So the thumbnails in the gallery are, are yeah. small. So I think that's another way to go because when you go to the page, you see this tiny gallery, you cannot appreciate the, the beauty of the picture. So we're not overly happy with this software. So we're going to keep hunting for another photo contest software that's specific that we can use on our website, on our existing website but we're gonna go with this one for now. We've got this photo contest and we need to judge some pictures. Okay, so one of the things that came up is we've got the public voting. We have an absolute clear winner who won the public voting like 10X more than all of the others. So really clear public voting. But I think it would be wise if we had public voting and then Photography Academy best choice. What about for the second one? Because this is an academy we name the Academy Award. It sounds so grand. Yeah, the yeah Academy yeah. Awards of Photography. Yeah, because the photographers that are in the group are really professionals, and I think they deserve it. They deserve a real and good name for this contest. The Academy Award. So we'll have the People's Choice Award, that's the public voting. Yeah, the public. And then the Academy Award, which is chosen by the Academy itself. Yeah, one thing that it would be really wise is to have categories. I do agree. Um, mixing wildlife with landscape and then mixing it up with uh, macro as well, it's so difficult in the judging process. Like, why is this flower better than this sunset? Yeah, so, if we exactly. had different categories, which again is kind of like the Academy Awards. The Academy Awards, yeah. And makes this more interesting because if you submit a picture or you specialize in landscape, you really are looking forward for the landscape category. Yeah, absolutely. It's pretty clear. We've got to, for the next contest, for contest three, we've got to separate the different categories. Macro, wildlife, landscape. What else? There's got to be something. Travel. Travel, yeah. Travel for those little French towns. What would you like to have as a voting process? One of the problems that came up in this particular contest is that everyone could see the current number of votes on every photo and that influences the voting. And the other problem is that when they were sorted by most popular vote, then on page one of the gallery, the only pictures that you see are the top pictures. And if you just submitted, then you're gonna be on page 10 and exactly. no one's ever going to see it. So that begs the question, should we not allow voting until all of the entries have already been submitted and the entries are closed? Should we allow to show the votes for everyone? And it's a really good question because does the number of votes influence the voters? I, I think, it, yeah, totally. Because if you see that someone is just voting in one picture, you are more likely to incline like for that, for yeah. that picture. Really, the bottom line is we want people to win awards. We want it to be the photos that deserve to win the awards. Yeah. It, you don't just get an award just because you showed up yeah. like field day and sports day <laughs> these days. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You need to earn it. You have to earn it because life is competitive. There are no free lunches. It's a competitive world out there. You have to achieve and overcome before you're going to get the ribbon that you can stick on your t-shirt. Yeah, exactly. You have to practice, practice, practice. So let's get some other opinions then from uh, everybody else in our world here in the Photography Academy. Yeah. Anybody and everybody. Yeah, Andrew is here and we would like to hear what Andrew has to say. Yeah, so meet Andrew. Andrew is my son who I went to Moraine Lake with and he's holding the camera right now. We're going to flip roles here and see what Andrew thinks of these entries that have been uh, posted for uh, contest number two. So, what do you think, Andrew? So there's no way I can get it bigger, eh? Hey? Yeah. <laughs> that makes it challenging. Uh, I think... <laughs> uh, I think that the... I think people's choice is great because obviously there's going to be some people that 
will get others to vote for their photo and maybe they have more influence online, more friends on Facebook, and that's great. They'll get a lot of votes through that, but then there's also people that maybe they don't know anyone or they posted late to the contest and then if they post on that last day they don't get enough popularity votes by public and so having the academy awards is awesome because it actually rewards talent what do you think about hiding the number of votes totally you're always gravitated towards the one that's top rated i mean think about whenever you buy an item you always go to the top rated item so i think people aren't going to be seeing the bottom half of any of the photos and then that goes to the whole popularity thing. If you don't have the public vote and you're posting on the last day, it doesn't mean your photo is any less important or it could be the best photo in the entire contest, but nobody votes for it. So it's smart, but the only problem is if you have a thousand photo entries, it's gonna be challenging to uh, go through every single photo and vote for it. What do you That's think about I the think. whole, uh, the, the academy? Should we make this like an academy award? Yeah, I think I think maybe when you start out, it could it could feel a, a slightly strange. Like the Academy Awards are for for movies and for video and acting, but at the same time, Photography Academy. Um, I liked what Fernando said that you're you're rewarding people that have put thousands of hours into photography and they deserve a high accolade. And I think Academy Award, give it some time and it'll stick. Again, there are some really incredible pictures here that make the judging process really difficult, but I think the key is that we need to break it up so that landscape is a category, macro is a category, wildlife is a category, and then it makes things a little bit easier and it, it's easier to keep the apples with the apples and the oranges with the oranges. That's really the bottom line. And welcome to contest number two from photographyacademy.com. And we are about to announce the winners of the People's Choice Awards and then the individual Academy Awards per category. So let's start with the People's Choice Awards. And I don't think there will be any great surprises, but it's always a fantastic learning opportunity to actually watch really closely the winning photos and to do what I call reverse engineering on them where you look at the specific elements of the winning photos and try and dissect and understand why is the winning photo a winning photo what elements are they using that makes it look so good and how can I use those elements when I'm in the field later on and I'm looking for that really nice composition and there are definitely tricks that you can learn and techniques that you can pull out of these winning photos that you will be able to use when the camera's in your hands. So let's get started here. Uh, we are, our starting point is photographyacademy.com and there's a link up at the top that says contest and you can see the contest gallery there. So let's take a look at photo number 10. I'm going to go through the top 10 photos. And photo number 10 is from Brian Hogaboom. He calls this one Under the Boardwalk. And this is a beautiful leading line type of shot. It's very reminiscent of a Peter Lick photo, which is a huge compliment, believe me. Uh, we've got beautiful orange tones in the sky. We have a slightly slowed down shutter speed so that the water has a bit of a blur to it, but it's not too slow that, uh, that we can't see the texture. It's probably about a one third or maybe a one half of a second shutter speed, I'm guessing. Beautiful photo. This one is number 10. Really great job, Brian. Let's go to the next one, which is photo number nine. And this is from Robert Ferguson, and he's calling this one Alaska Cabin Northern Lights. And wow, look at these Northern Lights. We can see the stars. So we know that the shutter speed was probably no longer than 30 seconds because the stars are not streaking. When you take shutter speeds of a night sky that are longer than 30 seconds, then generally you're gonna get those streaking stars. 
We've got this beautiful warm light coming out of every window. It's warming up the snow at the very bottom of the frame. It's just such a cozy, homey type of image. I love it. Really great job. Number eight is from Kevin Barr and he calls this one Farm Life. And a really beautiful photo. We've got a sunrise or a sunset. Uh, I like the fact that there is a foreground, a middle ground, and a background. We've got layers, rolling hills, layer upon layer. Beautiful colors in the sky with those orange tones and then going up to colder tones up at the top. So warm and then cold. Really, really beautiful. Great job on that one. Next one is number seven. And number seven is from Olga Carnaffel, and this is Moraine Lake in Banff National Park. And of course, if you've been watching any of my videos, you know this is my favorite place on earth. I think it's the most beautiful place in all of Canada. You know, in France, France has the Eiffel Tower. Well, Canada has Moraine Lake. This is the Eiffel Tower of Canada, and it's going to be here forever. It's Drop dead gorgeous. If you ever get a chance to go here, you have to go here. Just make sure you arrive a full two and a half hours before sunrise so that you can actually get there. Otherwise, the parking lot is full. Beautiful photo here. We have a nice foreground element of treetops, beautiful color on the lake, nice color in the sky. Uh, it's really great that she has uh, different wispy type of clouds in the sky. Gorgeous photo here. Love it. So that was number seven let's go to number six and photo number six is from brandon montrone and he is calling this photo silver lake sunrise and i really appreciate the beauty of this photo take a look at what's going for it here we have a completely still lake and really smooth water so that water becomes a mirror and it's mirroring all of this beautiful colored cloud in the sky we have beautiful color tones it's not over processed it's completely natural so there's just no question is this is this heavily photoshopped or not it's not uh, i like these interesting foreground elements it would have been kind of cool if there were some extra foreground elements over on the right hand side because we don't have any however it's still a beautiful image really great job on that one and number five is from Wendy Klein, who is one of the admins in our Photography Academy Facebook group. She's calling this one The Dancing Trees, and it's Lake Bonnie in South Australia. This photo is nothing short of incredible. Uh, I really like the fact that there is a sense of framing that's going on. We have an equal amount of visual weight on the left side compared to the right side. We have a perfect reflection from the top to the bottom. So it creates this sense of balance and symmetry on all four sides of the photo. Beautiful color tones in the, on the horizon, and this is a sunrise. Uh, this means that Wendy was really putting in the effort in order to get up early and to be at this specific location in time to be able to get this shot. It just goes to show that the beautiful landscape photos are not accidental. They're not just tourist snapshots that happen by chance. They are planned out in advance and Wendy did that here and she struck gold. So absolute beautiful photo, Wendy, well done. And number four is from Melissa Stott, and this is called Breaking Dawn. And wow, this is another beautiful one. And I don't know where it is, but beautiful balance and symmetry going on from top to bottom, left to right. We have this beautiful mist that's happening just over top of the lake. Uh, this is either a sunrise or a sunset, probably a sunrise because it's so misty. Uh, really well executed photo. I like that there is one clear main subject in the photo and that the villains have been cropped out. You know that whole principle of storytelling in your photos, that you find the hero of the story, which is this tree and the reflection of the tree, and you crop out the villains in the story so that there's nothing unnecessary, so there's a clear main subject. Excellent photo, well done. And number three is from Cindy Deppen, and this is Misty Columbia Bridge. And uh, another really beautiful photo. We have a beautiful leading line going diagonally from the right side into the center. So it leads the eye to the center. We have sunlight in the left side. We have an interesting foreground that tells a story of winter time and ice and cold. Beautiful colors in the sky. Really nice shot. Well done on that one. Now we get down to number two 
And number two in the People's Choice Awards is from Bob Juarez. And his title for this photo is Icicle Creek Fall Sunset. And a beautiful photo. What I like about this is that there's that sense of movement, sense of motion from the right down to the left. The water seems to be moving. We have this nice mist, kind of a smoky look that is on the horizon line. We have a sense of balance and symmetry from side to side, an equal amount of visual weight from the left side to the right side. So the photo is not heavier on one side than the other. It's equal, equally weighted. Really beautiful photo, nice blue in the sky, a bright point here in the middle that pulls the eye in, and uh, just a, a really nice presentation all around. So we get to number one of the People's Choice Awards with Photography Academy. And there was absolutely a clear winner here. It is David Woodring, and he is calling this photo Shagger's Sunrise. This is a gorgeous photo. Look at that sky, look at those clouds, sort of that popcorn kind of cloud look, and the way that it is perfectly reflected on the foreground. We've got some mist coming off this lake. We have a clear main subject in the middle. We have a sense of balance and symmetry from the left to the right, and it, it's a fantastic photo. So congratulations to David. You won first place in the Photography Academy People's Choice Award for this awesome photo that you took. And I'll also point out that David is a graduate of the Photography Transformation Master Class. And this is not the first award that David has won since he graduated from the Master Class. This is one of numerous awards that he's won. And uh, this is just another example of a real transformation in his photography and he should be really proud of this accomplishment. So we are going to take a 30 second break. I'm going to come right back and then I'm going to announce the Academy Awards for a few different categories of photos. I'll be back in 30 seconds. There are some photographers who believe that to be a great photographer, you need to have your camera in manual mode all the time. And to that, I say no. You keep your camera in manual mode all the time and you're going to miss those moments and then they're gone forever. There are no natural born photographers. It must be learned and you need to choose someone who you're going to learn it from. My name is Tim Shields. I help people become award-winning photographers, and I can help you. So if you are interested in improving your photography like 10x from where it is now, take a look at the Photography Transformation 4-Step System. I have a free web class that you can watch that tells you all about it and explains what the 4-Steps are and how you can use them to take your photography to the next level. Just go to photographyacademy.com and click on the button for the free web class. So we are now about to uh, announce the Academy Awards. Now just one thing I just want to say about this. Um, we are kind of at the mercy of this contest software that we purchased. We're not really happy with it. It's too clunky. And so we're looking for something else to purchase. So if your overall experience has not been the best with submitting and voting for the photos, we're aware of that. We're working on it and we're finding another solution that is going to be better. So the first category is cityscape. And I will give you the nominees for city, best cityscape photo for contest number two, it's Christopher Cagney for New York Night, Mike Lockhart, Manhattan from the Brooklyn Bridge Park, Adam Graves, Moonrise over Vancouver, Eel Bondarski, Singapore Casino, Manny Serial, Dubai by Night, and Alan Locke, Just Before Sunrise. And the Photography Academy Award for Best Cityscape goes to Mike Lockhart for Manhattan from the Brooklyn Bridge Park. What I love about this is that we have such a beautiful, uh, interesting foreground element that pulls the eye from the foreground right into the background. We have nice colors in the sky. We've got these nice yellow orange tones in the background on the buildings. We have leading lines going right down the middle that again, pull your eye from the foreground into the background. Um, you've seen this photo many times before. I've shot this photo myself. And there's a reason why it's so popular because it's just a naturally beautiful composition. And Alan did a really great job with taking this one. 
And for the best macro, here are the nominees. We have Aura May, After the Rain, Peter Igerhazi, Co-Renters, Jill Sestak, Hickory Tussock Moth Caterpillar, Chantel Germain with Friendly Encounter, Lance Sinclair, Master, and Roger Lanksbury with Hungry. And the Photography Academy Award for Best Macro is going to Jill Sestak with Hickory Tussock Moth Caterpillar. What I like about this is that Jill most likely took a black fabric and put it behind this particular plant so that it creates this incredible sense of contrast and the only thing you can see is the main subject. We have a beautiful sense of contrast as well with the white caterpillar and the green stem of the, of the plant and the focus is tack sharp. That's really important here as well. There's a sense of balance and symmetry from side to side. It's just a wow photo. And of course the, the other ones were wow as well, but this one just has that extra sense of complexity to it and beauty and art. I also love the fact that this plant happens to have a slight curve to it and uh, curved lines are always pleasing to the eye. So really well done on this one, Jill. And here is the Photography Academy Award for Best Wildlife Photo. Here are the nominees. Ruth Weeb with Bald Eagle, Arizona. Jim Dodds, Sitting Pretty. Emmanuel Papamanilis, Eye to Eye. Laura Terrier, Off into the Distance. Philippe Laurel, Bird. Dave Galatly, Frosty Fisher. Dennis Douglas, Captive Thought, and Robert Beale, Polygon. And the Photography Academy Award goes to Laura Terrier with Off Into the Distance. The reason that we chose this one was because of the level of complexity with this photo that I think that as a photographer, you could probably be in this spot for maybe about 10 straight years before this opportunity would present itself to see a bighorn sheep in front of this beautiful rocky outcropping on what looks like a mountaintop. We have fresh snow here. It is the most, I mean, the, the level of complexity to get this shot is next to near impossible. It's a really beautiful photo. We do have balance and symmetry going on with the bighorn sheep being on the right and the rock formation on the left. There are streaks of light coming from the left, uh, from the sun. Wow. Now these other photos were incredible as well. Like th some of them in the nominees were absolute showstoppers. It was, was a really difficult decision, but uh, this is the winner from photographyacademy.com. And now we go to the next one. And in the category of landscape and travel, we have Kevin Faust with the old mill, really nice black and white. And Bev Grimes, Rock of Cashel. This is in Ireland. Vladimir Turk, Woods in Fog. And Kevin Faust, White Cliff Park. And the Photography Academy Award goes to, for the category of landscape and travel, Kevin Faust with White Cliff Park. This is a really cool photo because we have a super interesting foreground. Obviously he took this photo with a wide angle lens and he did what I call the, um, I call it the wide angle lens paradox. When you take your camera and it has a wide angle lens on it and you bring it really low down to the ground, what happens, you're flipping the photo on its head and the main subject becomes the foreground. So you could argue that the island is the main subject, but you can also argue that the main subject are these rocks in the foreground that have barnacles on them and they're really beautiful. So I'm going to argue that the rocks in the foreground have now become the main subject. It creates a leading line all the way to the back. We have smoothed out water. We've got motion in the clouds from the long exposure. Really, really cool photo. Congratulations on that one, Kevin. And the Photography Academy Award for Best Night Sky Photo. Uh, here are the nominees. We have Robert Ferguson with Alaska Cabin Northern Lights. Helen Anderson, Awestruck. That is an awestruck Milky Way. I will definitely agree with that title. 
and Lenki Zalagi, Aurora, Iceland. And the Photography Academy Award is going to Robert Ferguson. Uh, what I love about this photo is that we have a clear main subject here. It's on the bottom. Well, it's on the right third. It's at the bottom of the frame. So there's a really interesting foreground element, beautiful sky and nice warm colors that are coming out of the cabin. I like the fact that we have light that is being cast onto the snow from the lights inside the cabin and through the windows and uh, some beautiful aurora type of colors here. We don't have any blown out highlights except for the light that's inside the cabin. That's a, a man-made light. And I think it's okay to have some blown out highlights on man-made lights because they're not natural, but not quite so okay to have blown out highlights in any other natural light sources. Beautiful, beautiful photo. So now we are going to the final category, which is the Photography Academy Award for Best Landscape Sunset. So here are the nominees. Reno de Tulo, Keyhole Sunset. Wendy Klein, Dancing Trees. Lori Kosnes, Wire Row. Kevin Faust, Iona Beach. Dan Trillo, Sunday Sunrise. Jim O'Connor, Iceland Sunset. And the Photography Academy Award for Best Landscape Sunset Photo goes to Wendy Klein with Dancing Trees. Now I already gave you a uh, quick rundown on this, but I will just repeat again what I really find exceptional about this photo is its originality that this is a composition that most likely you have not seen before. The perfect reflections, the editing that is just so subtle, not too much, not overdone, but just right to look really natural. Beautiful reflections, balance and symmetry from one side to the other. Also a sense of framing. Look at those branches that go over the top in that curved archway and it frames in the trees that are behind. It's just a perfect photo. I, I really love it. And um, Wendy's award here is very well deserved. So if you are wanting to know how you can improve your photography, my advice to you is, to really embrace the four-step system. And really all of the awards that you've seen today are as a result of the four-step system. So step number one, it's being in the right place at the right time. It's planning out your shots. It's not waiting for happenstance or chance. It's planning to be at the right place and planning to be there at the right time. It's waiting for weather events. It's waiting for seasonal events and it's waiting for sunrise and sunset to get that golden hour or blue hour light. That's step one. Step two is compositions in the four step system. It's looking for these types of compositions where you're using the tried and true rules of composition and you're stacking them one on top of each other. So you have the maximum number of rules of composition inside one frame and also using storytelling in your photos so that you are identifying that hero, cropping out the villains and what's left over is the beautiful, beautiful composition and frame. And remember, if you don't have a beautiful composition, then your photo is lost. The composition is the foundation. It's the cornerstone of the photo. Number three is the camera settings. There are really just two goals with your camera settings. Number one is to have a correctly exposed photo. No blown out highlights. And we do this with the histogram. And step number two is to have a photo that is tack sharp, usually from the front to the back. Now step four of the four step system is your post processing. That you are going to want to be able to do your post processing like Wendy and all of the other winners here where you're adding drama to the photo just enough but not too much so that it has that overdone look where people look at it and say, oh, that's so photoshopped. You want to add drama. You want to focus the eye of the viewer onto the area of the photo that you just want them to see. And the way that you do that usually is with the brush tool. The brush needs to become your best friend in photography. So if this is something you'd like to learn more about, then I invite you to see my free web class. Uh, I will put a link into this video here. Uh, you 
can also navigate to the free web class just by going to photographyacademy.com. There's a button there for the free web class and I will end off with this trailer video which shows you the contents of what is inside the full masterclass. Thanks so much everybody. Uh, if you didn't win an award tonight and you thought you should have won an award, Fear not, we have so many more contests coming and we're going to make them more and more professional as we move forward. Uh, we are looking for that new software and we're going to find it and it's going to help us to, uh, so that you can submit in categories properly. And um, thank you for being a part of this photo community. Each of you in both of the Facebook groups, the Photography Academy Facebook group, as well as the mastermind Facebook groups, which is just for people who have bought the masterclass. You all mean a lot to me. I love seeing your photos. I love reading your comments. I, I read everything that is posted into the group and it really makes me happy to see some of the progress that you have made with your photography. So keep up the great work and I will see you inside the Facebook group. Bye everybody. Take care. I want to welcome you to the Tim Shields Landscape Photography Transformation Masterclass. This is lesson one. You need to know when should you go there, what time of the year, what time does the sun rise, what time does the sun set. These are where the photographers would stand. What this shows us is the direction of sunrise and sunset. Welcome to class number two. This class is all about compositions. This is actually a very difficult location to find a good landscape photo composition. So this is my final setup. The sky is getting a lot darker now. It really pays off to take the time to walk around and not just settle for the first setup that you find. Welcome to your class on camera settings. Even though there are probably 100 different menu options on the back of this camera, there are only three that really matter. And now my autofocus has focused exactly on that dead leaf. So what I want to do is find something that is double that distance. Welcome to class number four on post-processing. One secret weapon, it is the brush tool. Look at the color tone that I've now got. Welcome to class number five. It is time to print your piece of fine art. There is the print that's printed on a metallic paper using a very high resolution printer. Then behind the paper is a sheet of aluminum and then in front of the paper is a clear plastic also known as acrylic. It creates a beautiful finished image. Welcome to class number six. This class is all about the promotion of your work as a photographer. It's important to have your body of work in one central location and this is extremely important. This masterclass is not just information, it's your photography transformation. I'm also including a bundle offer of my best-selling photography tools and courses including the presets and profiles post-processing bundle, the photography jumpstart bundle, photography the easy way bundle, and the photography from start to finish bundle. Let's start now. Click the button now and join me for your photography transformation. There are some photographers who believe that to be a great photographer, you need to have your camera in manual mode all the time. And to that, I say no. You keep your camera in manual mode all the time and you're going to miss those moments and then they're gone forever. I was hosting a workshop in the Camargue and these beautiful horses were galloping closer and closer to us. And some of the photographers missed out on those moments because they were fiddling with their camera settings. You need to let your camera do the heavy lifting for you so that you can do what you do best, which is find the beauty amongst all that noise. Landscape photography requires a quick ability to change your mindset because you don't control the light, God controls the light. I was in the lavender fields and I wanted a sunset, but what I got was storm clouds and lightning. So I set up to capture that and the photo is probably my favorite all time. Landscape photography has this way of being able to reach into your heart and say, put your busy life on hold and come with me. We have beauty to capture. And that's what photography is. It's about 
capturing beauty and creating your own art. My wife had just recovered from a life-threatening surgery and we were in the middle of nowhere on the edge of the Grand Canyon. It was sunrise, I was photographing down into the canyon and I looked up and there she was right at the top, silhouetted and bam, I got the shot. I love that photo because it's so reminiscent of her journey at that time and our journey together and that to me is what photography is all about. It's, it's about capturing our journey through our lives and capturing those moments that mean so much to us. Photography is about storytelling and when I'm out there shooting, I'm always looking to find a hero and often it's those small heroes that make the best stories through photography. There are no natural born photographers it must be learned and you need to choose someone who you're going to learn it from. My name is Tim Shields. I help people become award-winning photographers and I can help you.